We're kind of trespassing today, but not really. This is the pasture right behind our house, and before winter there was cattle on it. They pulled the cattle off. I assumed they would come back after winter, but for sell signs came up. So we're taking advantage of the, the vacant property. There's all these amazing views around us, but my plan this morning is actually to go up to these cottonwoods right up here and see if we can find a painting. And this is what we came for, the beautiful, scraggly, old cottonwoods. And I don't have any specific subject in mind. I just knew I wanted to come up here to these cottonwoods. So I'm going to put my stuff down and we'll walk around and try to find a few options. If you look through a lot of my recent paintings, you'll see that I've been painting these big, wide, expansive views of our mountains, which is great. And I'm fairly new to Montana and I'm loving these big views. But today I want to simplify. I want to be, I want to choose a more intimate scene. And that's why I'm up here right here with my subject. Have you ever seen a goose in a tree? I don't think he's very happy with me. <laughs> so I've been walking around these trees, sipping on some coffee, and to be honest with you, I'm not really feeling it. It's, I'm struggling to find a scene that's really, that's really grabbing me. And this will no doubt happen to you when you're out painting. And you kind of have to decide for yourself what, what's your goal for that day. And for me today, my goal was to come up to these cottonwoods and paint a, a more simple, intimate subject versus these distant big mountains. So I'm gonna do it. And I pretty much have two options that I found, which neither are super exciting to me, but we'll take a look at both of them. This is the first scene I was looking at with the shadows coming towards me and then these, these spots of light in the grass, but they're kind of, they're kind of dark highlights uh, because a lot of the lights are happening back here in the background. So you get some distant uh, atmosphere with these blue mountains and then these nice silhouettes of the dark trees with shadows coming towards you. And the second option I'm looking at is painting just this one tree right in the middle. And it's a really, you know, funky looking tree. And with these cottonwoods, uh, they're, they're kind of dangerous trees as you can see all the, the big branches on the ground because they, they constantly lose branches, sometimes big branches. And it's kind of it's kind of why I like this tree is it feels it feels like it's this old standing tree that's lost a lot of limbs and a lot of branches but it also has some nice lighting on it this right side is in shadow and then against the blue sky is all of these these light branches I think that could be pretty interesting as well so both subjects have interesting elements in them I'm just finding neither one super compelling so to decide we're gonna flip a coin or a rock or a leaf Okay, we're gonna flip a stick. If it leans to my right, we'll paint the first one. If it leans to the left, we'll paint the second one. <laughs> it's landed, it landed on another stick. Okay, here we go. Okay, it leaned to the left. We're painting the second one, which is the tree. All right, let's get started. I'm starting out with a uh, number four filbert brush. I prefer these hog hair bristle brushes. Um, by the way, if you're new 
to my channel. Last week I did a, a full week of demos. I did one every day last week. So check out, I'll put a link up here in the, uh, in the top right corner and you can check out those if you want. All right, and I just have a, a wet, a wet dark value and I'm gonna kind of draw in where I want this tree to be. I know I want the whole thing. It's got this nice lean to it, which is one reason I'm, I'm drawn to it. So let's see the bottom of the tree, put it around here. It's gonna lean this way. And let's put the, that top, kind of where that biggest branch was lost, kind of leans out a little further. Put it there and that'll leave room for all of these high reaching smaller branches. Something like that. Those bushes are going to be about... I think the first thing I'm going to do is block in the sky. I'm thinning this just a little bit, but not too much. And as I work my way down, lighting it up some. I'm okay just losing some of these branches. This was just an idea of trying to place place that tree. I'm gonna look at this row of trees here. It's kind of a purplish, purplish dark color, which I'm seeing kind of deeper in. Uh, we'll call that good for now. I'm just gonna dance that right over the top of these bushes. I think I'll just keep going, go straight to the to the ground right above right above this. It's a nice light. It's getting hit hit with a nice amount of light. It's warm. And then there's a fence line right here. And then it kind of turns to a greenish, a more green warm warm color. And of course, this whole area has shadows streaking through it. So I'm going to come back over, come back over with some shadows. And I'm grabbing a soft brush. This is a really cheap, I mean, from like those kits at like Michael's that come with like 50 brushes in them. Somebody gave it to me and uh, I donated all of them, but kept like two. And I have used this brush so much. And what I'll do now is, is thin down my paint a little bit with this and use a softer brush coming in with these shadows. I wish I would have kept these. So I'm gonna mix up a wet, a wet shadow. They're, they're dark, but I don't wanna just go straight blue. I, I, I tend to do that too much in my work. I, I love color. Um, but I want to I want to make sure I'm varying it. That's a little too dark. Let's see. This is just hinting, suggesting some of these shadows coming through here. I'm gonna address the dark side first in shadow. Then we'll move move on.
the light is really just on the edge and it, it, it wraps into the body of the tree a little bit in areas. But the lightest part is on the edge. So I want to make sure I get those three values, the, the shadow side, the light side, and what's right in the middle. It's actually cooler down here and it gets much warmer up here. So that's definitely something I want to try to, try to do. Just hint at some highlights around. And I'm mixing straight into that same pile, looking for that transition. Pushing this pretty warm. It is warm. I'm looking at it in real life thinking it's just a very warm, warm tone. I'm squinting at this group up here and I'm thinking I might can get away with just kind of just putting something in the sky to start with and then we'll come back and add some add some kind of details in, within there. I think I'll just do that in a lot of areas which already helps starting to get that effect that I'm seeing that caught my attention to begin with kind of the, the light coming off the, the light of these branches bouncing off that blue sky. This is kind of a wet, a pretty wet brown, brown mix. I'm just looking at some of those darker branches. I heard a great painter say one time, it was Catherine Statz. She said to, to not get too precious with your painting too early in the process. That if you get precious with it at all, it's going to be at the very end when you're trying to really finish that thing off. But especially in the beginning, if you start to get too precious with it, you, you almost kind of, you get too tight. You, I don't mean your style of painting. I mean your your whole body, your your thinking and everything gets too tight and rigid and uh, you might not allow yourself to break away and explore some options that that could make the painting better. And um, I always remember that when I'm painting, whenever I start feeling like I'm, I'm starting to get a little too careful right at the beginning or too early in the painting, um, I remind myself to not to not get too precious. I thought it was great advice. All right, I've been a little I've been a little timid as I'm getting this thing placed trying to figure it out. But I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about the direction and I want to add I want to add some some life to this thing. So I'm going to go for this area right in here, and I'm, I'm not getting the pop of value that's happening, that's, that's happening down there in real life. I want to do that. There's actually this uh, fence. I wasn't really, wasn't really considering putting that in there before, but it could be a nice little division here. And just with some wet, dark, you know, maybe I can gently suggest some something there. I can't so much see their shadows, but we can certainly imagine they're following the same the same line as everything else. Now this is getting confusing because that tree is much more in front, in front of those of that fence. So we want to make sure we pull that thing down. 
and let that tree and let the and let that fence go behind. Pulling up these these lighter grass this lighter grass value up over the back. It's in shadow. And then continue that idea up here in the foreground. I don't want to get carried away with this. I'm going to take one of my softer brushes and fill in some of this sky. You know, I don't mind these, these varieties that happen um, in the sky. You know, a little cleaner here, dirtier here. I, I think that some of those varieties can, can bring some interest, can bring some interest in the, the painting. So I'm not too, uh, I, I can just remember myself as a student seeing my teacher paint and there's so many things he would do I would just be like why would you do that oh man like uh, you know and then and then I can feel I can feel myself as a student thinking that and some of these things like oh he didn't he didn't mix up this, the exact same color um, and then when he finishes the painting you know the last thing I was looking at was the subtle variety of the sky I got lost in in the tree that he was painting or, or whatever the example was You get a lot of these highlights coming in with a nice light value. We already have these darks here, and I'm wondering if just creating some highlights on there might be might give it that effect that we're looking for. I think with a scene like this, when I'm looking at it, it's just the what, what drew me to it to begin with was kind of the wildness and craziness of all these branches. And so the last thing I want this painting to be is to look like some manicured, trimmed tree. I don't want that to feel like that. I want this to feel like this weathered old tree that's gone through a ton of storms and uh, it's getting hit with the morning light. Like that's what I want this to feel like. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, sky kind of in between these branches. So I'm going to get get a light sky value color. Let's see if I can pull pull some sky back in. So this actually there's a this branch is coming this way. And then there's a branch coming back. It's a little dark, but uh, it might help break break these two apart a little bit. I really like the direction we're going. And I think something that happened was I placed the tree a little too far to the left. I should have placed it over here and I could have taken up the canvas a little better. But as it is, it's forcing me to want to place another tree here. And so I'm just gonna grab the tree that's, that's right next to it. And in real life, it's placed about here. So I'm gonna use artistic license. And uh, my teacher would say, I'll play God <laughs> and rearrange nature push this tree over here and I'm going to put it right right in here and it's just it's straighter but slightly leaning to the left so that's what I'm going to go for and it's a little shorter something like that I just moved it over a little bit more and I'm just going to hint at some of these branches they're going to reach off of this. This hits down here. So I'm going to... That'll be branches or something. The light that's hitting that tree is not near as strong. Um, which I think could be nice for the painting as well. 
you know, maybe we'll play around with letting this kind of be the star and this be a supporting, supporting member. Though the branches up here are going to have some nice, some nice light on them still. I want to push a bit more interest in here and then see how that works as a whole. And this might be some, some darker value, some kind of rougher stuff. I don't know. I just want to see if, uh, if some shifts up here in the sky might help overall. losing some of my branches, but I don't mind. I can put them right back in over. And then just quickly throw some of those branches back over this both dark and light. I'm just going to take the back of the brush and a few other areas that I feel like are just too, a little too careful. Vary, vary that, those lines up a little bit. My lighting has shifted quite a bit. The sun is much higher now, so I'm gonna stop there. But I'm really glad I just made myself go for it, even though I wasn't thrilled about the subject. Let me know what you think in the comments below on how the painting is going. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week. You ready to go home, buddy? You ready to go home? Where's Tasha? Where's Tasha? Where's she at?